awfully schwalksa by far my dog's favorite pastime and i absolutely love to see them running and playing but given that i live with two dog breeds that are not renowned for their great recall Parson Russell Terrier and Saluki, I have to be quite creative to be able to have those off-leash walk sessions. And so today in this video, I want to share my best tips and tricks for doing exactly that. But this is not a recall training video. Those are just uh, like uh, small things that can supplement your uh, training that will make your off-leash walks easier, but absolutely nothing can replace actual dog training. Safety is absolutely my first concern when I'm thinking about uh, dog walks and where I'm going to let my dogs off-leash. So I always choose places that are far enough uh, from any roads with any notable traffic. And I also prefer places that are far enough from other people homes and far enough from places where other people are walking or where a lot of people are walking. Of course, it isn't always easy, but uh, that's definitely my number one concern. I'm always going to like so those far away places where I feel safe enough that my dogs won't meet a car or a, another human or another like dog that's guarding a house. And that's uh, the first thing that I always keep in mind when I'm choosing the place where we are going to walk. And what makes the place suitable for off-leash walking isn't only al always solely depending on the surroundings. It sometimes depends on your individual dog. For example, Lamora for a year or so wasn't able to go off leash in the forest because once he lo lost sight of me, he sometimes he somehow also lost his hearing. I don't know how it works. Salukis are aliens. Um, but uh, so for a while I could go on only walk on the beaches or on the meadows or stuff like that. So that also depends on your dog. My next tip is keep moving. If you just stop or chat with your friends or you know you just uh, st stand there and watch your dogs running, your dogs get really easily bored and they see that oh well you, you're standing there I might as well go explore there's nothing happening I don't have to check where you are and uh, so when I go walking with my dogs off leash I always keep in mind that I have to keep moving. Of course, sometimes I'll stop for a really short time to like uh, snap a photo or I don't know, to tie my shoelaces or stuff. But in general, I just want to keep moving so they have to keep checking where I am. And when they keep checking where I am, there's a way bigger guarantee that they won't go running off too far away. Also, I always have uh, treats and toys with me. Uh, you can check out this video for my best uh, treats that I make for dogs. And also, I like to take toys with me. Like for Mio, I'll take uh, two tennis balls so I can throw her one ball. And if she doesn't want to give me back, I, I can give her another one. Like. She's a terrier, she sometimes gets those glitches, but I just have learned how to manage those and like she's crazy for tennis balls, so I can simply give her those. Of course, not all dogs will always take treats when they're out. For example, Lamor sometimes is uh, too excited to take treats. Uh, I, I am slightly worried about that, but I, I will still reward him in different ways for coming back. So I don't always expect my dogs to take a treat. To give my dogs better understanding that I really want them to come back to me and that it's really fun to come to me, I always reward them for checking in with me, meaning that uh, if they're running around, I didn't call them, but they came to like just look at me or walk by me, I always will reward that. Uh, for Lamora, I reward every single time when he really checks in with me. For Mio, I sometimes reward slightly less, like I don't give a treat for every single time because sometimes she just starts using that and she's just like running a bit away and then coming back and like, where's my treat? Give me treat, give me treat. And so obviously I don't want to give her all the treats in like five minutes. This also really makes them clear that if they come back to me, that doesn't always mean that they'll be leashed up because you know, when you're calling them, most often that means they'll be leashed up because either something is uh, coming up where we can't go off leash or we're going back home. And uh, so I will reward them for checking in. And like once or twice in every walk, I'll just call them 
give them a treat and then release without uh, getting them on leash. But I don't want to utilize that too much because then they're just getting bored and like, you know, they're saying, oh, she's calling again, I don't want to go. Like, just don't make those things too boring. Huge boost for my nerves and general calmness and me being able to be more confident on the dog walks is the fact that my dogs have uh, GPS trackers and their collars. So if anything happens, I can uh, check on my phone where my dogs are. I haven't actually had too many occasions of using that. I Actually, in all those years when I've had those GPS trackers, there has been only one time in all those years where I felt like if I hadn't had the tracker, I'm not sure I would have found Mio because uh, she had found a dead animal in the forest and she was eating it and she wasn't responding to any calls or something. So yeah, that was kind of crisis situation where I don't know like how long would I have been looking for her because I couldn't see her anywhere. And she was like in a place where even uh, looking at my GPS, I, I, I was looking at the GPS and walking and seeing where she is. I had to like almost stumble on her to find her because she was like a little bit lower than the rest of the forest. Again, GPS tracker is not a training tool. It won't help your dogs if they get in trouble. Like it won't keep your dogs away from the roads. It, it does nothing to your dogs. It just helps you to find your dog if something happens. And mainly I just treat it as a device to keep my nerves calm and just like a safety net that I know that I mostly don't need to use that. Mostly nothing will happen if I don't have it, but I just feel so calmer when I have it that it's totally worth having it. And if you want to know more about GPS trackers, I'll be making two videos in the weeks to come. I'll make one video like in general about the GPS trackers, what they are and um, how to choose one. And I also want to make a review for the ones that I'm using. I'm using Tractive. So if you don't want to miss those videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel so you see those upcoming videos. And now back to the tips about off-leash walking. The vicious circle about off-leash walking with your dogs is the fact that the more you do off-leash walking, the easier it gets for your dogs, the easier it gets to manage them. And then if you're not doing that, the next time when you go off leash, the first time is always kind of hard. So the thing is, if you're not already doing off leash walking, the first time is really scary. And it's also a bit harder for your dogs. I really like the analogy that uh, Sarah Streming was using in her amazing uh, podcast, Cock Dog Radio. Uh, she was telling like, imagine if you're a starving person and then suddenly someone, someone like teleports you to a full buffet where you can get anything you need, everything you want, and you can take ev just everything that you want and you have been starving. And so obviously if you're a starving person and then you get to that buffet, you go crazy, you go batshit crazy, you grab everything, you, you, you can't control yourself, you don't hear what's happening around, you, you just you go crazy. On the other hand, if you're a lucky person who has enough food to eat and you're not starving, when you go to the buffet, you are still really enjoying that. Like, the, no doubt you're enjoying that, but you can also control yourself. You can decide, oh, I want this and I want that, and you don't go crazy, you don't forget your manners, you don't forget any social norms. And uh, dog walking off leash works exactly the same way. The more you do that, the easier it gets. And for myself, I've also realized that it's easier for me to go on off-leash walks if my dogs has already spent some of that crazy energy. So I'll mostly go off-leash walking like the next day after agility training, or I'll maybe one day go to my friend's yard, let my dogs run there. And then the next day we are going to like forest and letting my, our dogs run in the forest. And uh, so, while nothing can really replace the off-leash walking, nothing really comes that close to that action, I've realized that for my dogs, if they've 
already healthily spent some of that energy, it, it gets slightly easier for them to really behave better on the off-leash walks. And so I'll just make sure that uh, they are not like really amped up and they haven't been sitting like two weeks at house not doing anything before I go off-leashing with them. Off-leashing should be a new term. You might also want to consider maybe going with your friends who also have dogs and the better behaved dogs they have the better for you because if your dogs are like in a pack uh, sometimes they are wanting more to play with each other they're not wanting to run away but of course uh, the general rule is your dogs have to get along like don't go off leash walking with dogs that your dog hates that's a recipe for disaster and lost dogs and fights and don't don't do that. But there are actually several benefits from uh, going with a dog pack, ju not just your own single dog. First is that, as I mentioned, they want to play maybe or they're running together more as a pack and then you call for one and the other wants to come. But also sometimes in uh, like a more crisis situations, like crisis, I mean, I don't know, in my head crisis is when I see another person coming at us. Um, so if I see, for example, there's another person coming to us and the dog park is running, it's usually easier to get all of the dogs back if at least one dog starts running at you. And uh, so even if I, I'm going with only my, my two dogs, I'll sometimes call only one of them and they both come back. I'm not saying this works 100% of the time or with uh, every dog. Every dog is really different and, uh, you know, dogs do have emotions and stuff is going around them. They're not robots. But in general, it's really helpful to have several dogs, especially several well-trained dogs. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And uh, so it's easier to get the, that really nice recall and also because dogs tend to be jealous you know if you're starting to give treats to one dog other dogs will also want those treats my next warning to you is be vigilant when you are walking with your dog you have to be the first who sees everything that's happening around if there's some sort of animals appearing if there's humans walking the trail on the opposite way or if there's suddenly a car coming at you in the middle of forest, which has actually happened to me, don't ask. You have to be the first who actually sees that and you have to call your dog before your dog has seen that, which uh, let me tell you, doesn't always happen that way. And like, it's little, like it's literally impossible to always see everything before your dog sees that. Like we are really handicapped in our smelling capabilities and so uh, our dogs can smell everything way faster than we can. Like don't go walking and like checking your phone and not paying attention to your dogs. When I go off leash walking, I treat it like an activity for my dogs, not really for myself. Well, I, I really enjoy those walks, but I really think about them this is time for my dogs and I'm paying attention to my dogs. I'm paying attention to what's happening to them. So I'm not taking away too much attention uh, from them. Sure, I'll chat with my friends or with my husband, but uh, I'm still keeping an eye on where my both dogs are and I keep checking that they're not too far away from me. And of course, whenever I see like uh, something uh, potentially dangerous or harmful or just unpleasant coming, like if I see cars or humans, I'll call my dogs and I'll put them on the leash and then we'll go by and then I let them off leash again. And that uh, brings me to the next tip is use your leash on off leash walking. There are situations where you need to leash up and then afterwards you can let your dog go. But also I use leash around the car. so. I usually don't allow my dogs to go straight off leash from the car. I usually will leash them up. We'll walk a little bit. I'll make sure that there are no other people, no other dogs. And only after I've made sure that the situation is actually good and clear, then I'll let them go off leash. And also when I'm coming back to the car, 
I will usually leash my dogs up before we even see the car. So I'm checking that, the, okay, we are getting close to the car. I'll leash them up because, well, my dogs don't want to go home ever. They would like want to run free for weeks and months and years. But, um, you know, we have to go home at some time. And so if they start seeing the car, the recall abilities really, really drop. And I've learned the hard way that I really need to leash them up before we reach our car. And if they're already on the leash, we go, simply go to the car, I ask them to jump in and they jump in, no problem. But like if they're off leash, they're still feeling that freedom. Oh, I want to go running. I don't want to go home. So sometimes they wouldn't want to jump in the car. And so that's why I keep them leashed up sometimes and it also gets them used to the situations where you know if something happens I need to leash you up it's not the end of the world I'll maybe let you go afterwards and I'd say that the most important thing about off-leashing with dogs is that you as a human have to be really calm and confident because our dogs read us really really well they know if we are stressed or, or like anxious and dogs can get anxious and stressful too because we are acting like it they're like starting to check oh what's happening i, I don't know I, I i'll go explore I'll, I'll go check it out for you and so but if you're calm and confident if you're just radiating like this I know what I'm doing, uh, then it's way easier for your dogs to also feel calm and to really rely on you to know what to do. And actually all those tips that I've mentioned before really help me to be more calm, more confident, more in control. Like I know I'm managing this situation. I've planned for everything I possibly can. Obviously there are things that I can't plan and that's always a thing. but. Uh, I can simply go with confidence to the forest. I know that I've picked the place. I know that my dogs are safe. I know that I have treats. I know I can recall them. And uh, that's how I manage safe off-leash walks. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you'd like to reward me for this video, if you find this beneficial, please like it and uh, maybe comment what uh, tip did you found the most useful. And also don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you are notified about every video I post in the future. And I'll see you next week.